Nice to see you, just, just busy. And Kazim Saab with his uh, hat. I love the hat. Yeah, I like the hat as well. It suits Kazim. I was telling Kazim that Kazim, you're looking nice in this hat. Mm -hmm. so, so we have two small, very quick lectures. I think uh, um, Perinus Lunga's uh, graph is the in thing. I've been, uh, been uh, inundated with it by, um, by our uh, colleague here, Hossein uh, Ofad. And he's talking about putting it in elderly people, but I have read it and it is the way forward. And since you, you, you are doing quite a lot of those, um, I was wondering if you could share your thoughts with us. And then I think, Kazim, uh, we can, we can uh, if you want to, you can, you can do your talk. If you don't want to, you don't have to, because it looks like you either pretending no, or you're fine. It's fine. fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay, then, when you're ready. No, no, honestly. No, 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 can start with it. So I will talk then, yeah? So guys, I, I I thought that we will have some, uh, I have some internet uh, uh, joining us for the talk. That's why I prepared the talk exactly the way I talk for the other place when I used to do them. So I thought I'll just share that with you guys as well. The same. So thank you very much, first of all, and over for for the invite. So uh, the reason I chosen this word, my favorite ACL, is for a simple fact. Uh, when I was given this this talk that why did I use uh, Peronius Longus as my favorite ACL, I, I thought a lot about it first. And I thought that why do I uh, share this experience, been a consultant for so many years, and you start change particular practice as you get more and more older. So I, I, I made a few slides just to justify that in a simple way, like when you're in early 30s, you always as a trained registrar, you want your colleagues to be next to you. You want them to guide you. You follow your teachers and whatever they do, you always believe that that is the favorite procedure or for example, a favorite ACL of your life. Late thirties, a few years down the line, being a consultant, your confidence level goes to the extreme and you feel that whatever you are doing actually will become your favorite ACL and nobody can beat you. But here comes the mid forties and you realize the fact that actually the journey is very long. You need to have a strong foundation. You need to have a well-reserved, stable ride to pass this long journey of surgery, being safe, effective and evidence-based. So on the basis of that, I will just share my experience that why I believe that Peronius Longus can be a good graft. So from the fact that uh, almost one in three and a half thousand people are at risk of injuring ACL, nine to five thousand annual surgeries done in USA. No real time data so far from Pakistan, but we still know that majority of the places ACL is done openly, especially in Pakistan. And there are many challenges that we have to come across. First of all, graph choices. We know we have options of allograft, synthetic graft, autograft, which are commonly nowadays used for many years as hamstring, BTB, and in the last few years, quads is taking over the popularity. But in the Pakistani market where we are practicing, we know that there are difficulties in getting hold of allograft and synthetic graft, making multi-ligament reconstruction or revision surgery much more challenging. We know from the fact that bone patella tendon, bone graft and hamstring graft are amazing, but they don't come without their own problems. We know that BTB has got proven history of having problems with healing, anterior knee pain, patella fracture, extension, and same thing for hamstring. Graft size is the biggest issue, which I also did come across many times in Pakistan when the patient were young and thin. Even quadruple hamstring tendon doesn't go above seven. Sometimes the graft rupture during surgery, even though how much expert hand you have in ACL. And Amir will agree with that, that even though how much experience you get and you do hundreds of them, sometimes you do... 
to twice or even more in your career. Hamstring weakness, a saphenous nerve, and the recent paper published by Hardy in 2017 showed that the risk of anterior knee pain in a systematic review, 46% and saphenous nerve damage, 39%, which is quite a lot considering I did not come across like that in my career of doing hamstrings and BTB. Despite that fact, I still believe hamstring and BTB are gold standard. I love using them. So these are a few of the patients which I did hamstring tendon. They have very good outcomes. Issue is not that. Issue are slightly different. What happens when you things go wrong, especially in revision cases, when you don't have availability, especially in complex cases, when you're doing multi-ligament reconstruction, you don't have availability of allograft and synthetic graft. So these are the few challenges which you come across on a routine basis when you are performing procedure in Pakistan in a market where a patient comes to you and they have multi-ligament injuries. So challenges, multi-ligament, as I mentioned. Graph diameter, which was the major concern I always wanted. And Francesco in his study showed that every 0.5 millimeter thickness in graft actually improves the outcome and leads to less failure. And lack of allograft and synthetic graft, which I mentioned before. So can Peronius longus autograph be a graph of choice? Before I wanted to explore that, I wanted to look into a few things. Number first, recent years it gained popularity and attention. What is the biomechanical studies proving? And what is the clinical control trial which we did? So let's look at a couple of data. Tensile strength and ankle gait analysis. So tensile strength was <laughs> nicely studied by Fatima in 2007, published in International Journal of Open Surgery. She compared tensile strength of PL versus hamstring, 12 samples in each group. PL tensile strength was 233 Newton versus hamstring 205. Ankle gait analysis was quite nicely actually examined by Nazim from Iran, a paper published in 2014 in advanced biomechanical research study. 15 patients, six months follow-up, 3D ankle, spatiotemporal walking gait parameter testing was done and PL tendon does not cause any effect on gait analysis and no ankle instability was measured. When we looked at the clinical outcomes, Bancha from Thailand, very good friend of mine, did his first actually paper published ever in his case series of 25 patients, 12 months follow up, ankle scores and visual analog score was done. Dynamometer peak torque was also measured with a version of ankle. He found non-significant deterioration in ankle score, but actually significant loss of ankle aversion at seven months. The reason when I ask him this question, why does he feel as and the testing too early, seven months is too early to justify the outcomes. I would have considered 12 months or 18 months, but in a study, he found functional outcome to be normal, but ankle aversion to be bad. More studies from India. The paper was published in 2018 in which they did case series of 25 patients, six months follow up IKDC score. And they found that the knee score plus PL tendon can be considered graph of choice, but the study was weak. But I got more excited when I read this study by Tommy in 2019, published in Kesta Journal, level two study in which he compared hamstring versus peroneus, 28 hamstring tendon, 24 PL tendon, IKDC, Lishom, and American Academy of Foot and Ankle and Fabi score were measured. Donor site and thigh circumference were also measured. And the results were good at one year follow-up, comparable to knee score, excellent ankle score, less thigh hypertrophy in PL group, obviously because hamstring and tendon does that, larger graph diameter. So on the basis of that, we decided to run our own randomized controlled trial in AO clinic. We did comparison of PL versus hamstring. We took ethical committee approval from United Medical University. Study started in September. We did all the scoring. We are finished. We finished our study a few months back and now we are doing our data. Let me show you a couple of my surgical slide, how it is done. Obviously, you put the patient in the same position like you do your ACL reconstruction. You make a small incision two centimeter above the tip of the fibula. It's an amazing graft. You can easily identify it. The most simplest graft you can actually harvest without any major issue. Open up the fascia, identify peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Once you identify both of them, I use a clip and bring both the tendons one over other 
so that I can do T node DCs of Peronius longest to Peronius brevis. So top and the bottom are stitched together. I use a two zero Y krill. So the stitch should be buried on the under surface so that it doesn't cause any irritation. Similarly on the opposite side, I use two on each side. And once it's done, then you can use number two strong Y curl to do the whip stitch before you cut the tendon like you do your standard tendon. And then you use close stripper. Make sure you have a nice cocker or something to hold the tendon or your assistant can hold the tendon. And as you can see, the graft comes out very nicely and decent size, thick graft is harvested. Once that's done, you can repair the fascia on top of that. It's quite a long graft and quite a strong and thick graft. Once you do that, you can use whatever loop you want to do and prepare yourself and then repair the fascia on top of it because that's really important. Otherwise, it causes slight irritation to the skin. I have a choice in Pakistan, which we are finishing our study on it. I always do antibiotic spray on my graft. I use adjustable loop on the femoral side in most of the cases. I preserve the muscle belly on top of it because my colleague has published the work. bio screw, which is standard. I preserve the stump as much stump is there. Sometimes I even leave a couple of the fibers attached. I like to do PRP in most of my patients. And it seems to be quite an amazing graft when you look at it comparing to hamstring tendon. They're very strong. They're very thick. They're very uniform, very different from hamstrings. We have a very set protocol, which we followed focus on PL rehab. Every patient had to go to the same rehab program for ankle aversion. I gave all my patient rehabilitation online video rehab program with Prof Damir, which we developed and now it's been extensively used in Pakistan and even here and Croatia. And now we launched it in China. And that is this almost 46 to 50 days of online program focused on each surgery, which we give. I did dynamometer testing at three months, six months, and even 12 months. Sorry, let me just go back and show you what the dynamometer, oh, oh. sorry. Let's see if it shows. So we do the dynamometer static testing and dynamometer dynamic testing. And interestingly, at six months, the static testing was showing 0.8%, less than 8% loss and dynamic testing less than 5% loss at six months and on clinical examination, obviously it was clinical. Both sides were almost comparable. None of the patient had any so far. I think seven months, eight months down the line, jumping without any pain, without any ankle discomfort. So it was quite amazing to see the outcomes of peroneus longus in Pakistani population. I would still hold my answers and reserve my verdict until I have three years outcome. And since my study has completed, I have stopped doing peroneus longus because I want to make sure that my study will show minimum, minimum two years to three years outcome before I would make it as a routine graft. This is a, you can see eight months and he went to, he sent me this video a few months back showing that he is doing hundred meter race and how confident his speed is without any pain and discomfort. So I think why I decided to do uh, Peronius Longus as my favorite graph, because you come across challenges where you practice, especially in Pakistani population. And the same thing, the favoritism change with the age and experience. And recently my favorite ACL has become ACL repair, just like I tried from two wheeler. Now I like more four wheeler. So thank you very much, guys. That was the talk I wanted to share with you. I'm open to question, open to suggestion, whatever you guys want to ask. Thank you very much. Um, a very interesting talk. I, I do a bit of reading. That's one of my biggest flaws, isn't it? I read it and I, 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 I remember 
uh, that we we didn't. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay. So um, um, I have read that perineus longus on its own can be used, and I've also oh. read that there is perineus longus uh, uh, tenodesis you have to do in some of the papers that I've so read. So I can hear anyone here. Yeah, we, we're all here. You cannot hear us. You, you, you've got out of our meeting or something, is it? Can you no. hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but can you hear us? Uh, but I can't hear you guys for some reason. So you I need to log any... in again. Go log out and come My back voice again. Voice coming up. Come on over. Yeah, yeah. Your speaker is off. You speak, you're, you're muted. For some reason, I can't hear yeah. any of you. No, he's not muted. I can see you now, yeah. but I can't hear you. So are you muted? Your volume button no. is showing off. Your volume may be low. Ah, okay. Hello. Yeah, I got it now. Thanks. Okay. I'm so, happy. so like I was saying, uh, I have done uh, uh, a lot of reading into this. Uh, that's why I, I asked you to do it. My understanding is a bit different, but let's get the me guys talk first and then I'll come back and you know, Amr, do you have to say something? I think it's really interesting and uh, I think where you don't have an allograft I can see how it can be a good option because then what else are you going to use? Um, presumably it's just going to be a two strand graft rather than a four strand graft. Uh, if you do all inside Amir then maybe you can bail yourself out with four strand but imagine that on, on uh, in our study average of double bundle was coming between 9.2 to almost going up to sometime 10 millimeter. Because I've used perineus longus uh, as an allograft and it's a nice thick uh, tendon. Mm. So I think the, that, that, I think when you don't have any other option, um, would you, uh, what would you say, perineus longus or quads tendon? Because that's the other option, isn't it? Which um, or to what? What are your thoughts between quads tendon and perineus longus? Because then you. I mean, I look into I look into knee joint as a as a joint that is a sick baby. Yeah. It's already got cartilage injury, so it's sick. It got a meniscal tear, which majority of the time we repair. It's more sicker. We drill a hole inside the inside the knee to make it more sore. Plus, we take quads from it to make it more painful. So I think. There is no doubt that there are strong papers coming out with regards to quads tendon. But I feel quads is a very strong graft. It's actually, it's, it's pluses and minuses, isn't it? You have quads, which is as important, like peroneus, which is as important. It all depends on how much you are willing to understand how much morbidity that will cost to the patient. We all believe that quads and BTB and hamstring are as important as peroneus. So it's individual choices, what you want to do. I think the thing is what I was saying, thinking is this knee, as you say, is already sick. So if you, if you take quads from the sick patient, rather than then go to the ankle, which is not sick, mm. uh, that's the thing because um, if there is any chance on the longer term studies, even with that paper where statistically, perhaps the eversion is not so good. So you do you then have one, two joints that are maybe not perfect. But Absolutely. I think, uh, but I think, you know, as you uh, have demonstrated, if you've got no choice and uh, it's between perineus longus or nothing, then perineus longus seems to be good. And especially if you've done... I, feel, uh, I feel also uh, that the whole purpose of doing the RCT was to answer this question. And that's yeah. the reason I stopped eating. Peroneus since I started to finish the study and we I want to see in next two years what the outcomes are if in next two years or two three years if the outcomes are not worse then we can justify its utilization not as a primary autograft of choice but as an autograft to bail yourself out in a scenario when hamstring tendon thickness is not enough or when you're doing a multi-ligament reconstruction in which you don't want to get stressed about that how the hell I will Make more drops or use the other. I think there's another. I think, I think somebody is talking in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I'll just show that. Give me a second. So I think there's too much noise, Amir. And I sorted. I think uh, agreeing with your principle, if it's between going to the other uninjured leg 
and sticking to the same leg but the ankle. I'd rather stick to the same leg and peroneus longus than uh, go to the opposite uninjured leg and strip hamstrings from there if peroneus longus uh, is proved. So I think... Okay. The, other, uh, the other thing to, to add on, I always repair peroneus longus with brevis. Yeah. Still have quite a lot of peroneus longus which is going the foot and attachment so the function is still preserved and there is a study which i would share with you that they are saying three years down the line when they did the mri scan the regeneration of peroneus longus returns back i don't know how it happened but they found that the peroneus longus regeneration after three years on mri scan was back like hamstring i think it's pluses and minuses i think it's all depend on your experience uh, and your your own practice uh, how it works but i feel that when we were very young our teachers and our mentors gave us this information that the only graft of choice you can only do is is, is hamstring and btb if at that stage maybe in early 70s they found that peroneus is a better graft maybe today we were justifying hamstring it's vice and versa if you take it as you believe it and i think evidence the whole game plan is to produce good evidence to justify that in the last two years five paper have been published and last one is in kesta that shows that the world is showing interest towards some new grafts but omar would you ever do you think that it could replace a hamstring uh, that is very difficult to say, uh, uh, Amir. That's the reason I stopped using them. I thought that I want to make sure that this is a graft that can be used as a primary. But, but I, would, I will tell you with my experience, there is no doubt that peroneus longus is far superior when you hold it, when you insert it, and when you see them clinically. There is no question about that, that they are bloody strong graft. And I would love to use them if they don't have long-term morbidity. Because I, I don't really have... Uh, much problems, thankfully, with the hamstring graft. They seem to be pretty stable. Then you can do secondary fixation with a fiber tape independent of the graft. I think my worry is uh, maybe mixed messages to the juniors or people who struggle taking hamstring graft. I'm sure people who don't know their anatomy who struggle taking hamstring graft and then they look to other options. <laughs> Because it's technically simpler for them. Mm. So that, that's the one thing that I would just uh, have concerns now. But hopefully with your studies and other studies, maybe those concerns are not just... I think that that is the reason I never say to anyone to use peroneus longus as a primary graft of choice. I wanted to tell them that this is a thing which we did. And I wanted to tell them that we wait. When we wait, more results will come out. When more results will come out, we will then justify its use as a routine. But I still believe that if you are doing multi-ligament or revision cases, it's not a bad option. Okay, so, so Sufyan has a question, but let me make a comment too. I've been reading quite a lot, so I don't do ACLs. So I have no clue what ACL is all about. But apparently, peroneus longus is uh, getting a, a lot of attention from a lot of surgeons around the world. There is now evidence to support that certainly it is the graft of choice if you're doing multi-ligaments and if you are doing revision surgery, that, that's un undisputed. There is now evidence to suggest, uh, I, I will share the papers with everybody, there is now evidence to suggest that it is think thicker, stronger, and more, more uh, functionally better than the ACL's uh, uh, reconstruction with hamstrings. Okay, it does not match the quads uh, strength, but it does match the four quad strength ACL's. If you do a two strand peroneus longus, it is actually the same strength as doing a four strand hamstring. But like I said, uh, uh, the Americans are, are really, really going with this. But let, wait and see. Sofian, your question? Your question, Sofian? We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Sofian. Question? You can't ask hear him. Sofian, you want to ask a question? No, I wanted to make a comment, if that's okay. Okay. Tarek. Right. Tarek is here. How are you? Yeah, we're the shoulder <laughs> surgery is supporting our knees. Yeah, yeah, shoulder, shoulder. Yeah, um, just a quick one. You say you're doing an RCT, Omar. I've finished the RCT. You see, in the, you were saying in your slides that in some patients you use PRP. And it, no, no, all... all uh, it, this was this was my technique of showing them that how I do my ACL, not in the peroneus group. So you didn't use PRP in the peroneus? No, no. So that's what I just want to say with the RCT. No, 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 no. 
This yeah. was a routine practice of showing that how I like to do my SEOs. That would be very interesting. Can I just ask, what was the percentage of people who came from a sporting background with this? Uh, obviously, I need to check the data. Uh, yeah. I would say on with experience, I think between 30 to 25, 30% were proper sports players. The rest of them were playing sports, but not professional. Not professional, yeah. It would be interesting to see the results. I mean, very because good. obviously, when I when I offered them the RCT, you can imagine that a couple of the professional sports players were not interested in it. Yeah, because no, yeah, there's always a, yeah, they always yeah. want the leading edge treatment, but not experimental. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just, just one other uh, question. You say you leave the muscle belly on. Doesn't that have a potential for causing cysts later? Because that's oh, what... uh, 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 that's I'm doing it for the last two years. I also always felt like that. Yeah. So when I'm cleaning the tendon, I used to strip them clean and make them white and shiny. Now I only take out the bulkiness of it, but rest of it I keep. I will send you the share of the paper of Damir, which was published in Basic Science. And and interestingly, they've done a very extensive study on it. And they found that skeletal muscle actually enhances bone tunnel integration. And if you look into it, actually, it's if you, if you, re, if you uh, accept the nature, there is a reason why nature has kept muscles with the tendon. So I, I, maybe it's right or wrong, but it is called candy strip uh, tendons. And Dahmer has got a very strong belief in it. And he is doing more studies now on it biomechanically and histology wise as well. And he, <laughs> that's the interesting thing because if you again because of worry, then it's psychops lesion or cysts. Uh, interestingly, I didn't come across just like routine cyclop lesion. You come across maybe one in your in your ear. The same thing happened to me. Not like a massive volume of sudden cyclop lesion or cyst happening. So that is it. It'd be interesting to see post. If you, I don't know whether you could get approval for an MRI. <laughs> no, I, I have, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done that. I, I'm doing actually MRI scan on all my primary ACL repairs, which are amazing. But I'm not doing. Uh, this is something topic we can have a chat next time if you guys want. This is something which I'm really interested in. But otherwise, I think uh, in this uh, ACL reconstruction, as I said, I, I keep and and uh, I keep the most of the muscle belly attached to it. I remove the bulk of it, but I like to keep on it. Because yeah, that's interesting because that's different to how we do things. I also used to do the same, like you are saying. I remove everything, keep it neat, neat and shiny. Yeah. So, uh, and don't do that anymore. So, you know what Kazim and Sufyan think? Go on, Kazim. So, I, uh, one comment. Uh, of course, amazing work by Dr. Omar Bhatt regarding uh, the perineus longness. And uh, as uh, we are doing this multi-ligament injury and uh, we have the highest series of multi-ligament injuries uh, so far and uh, we are in the process to publish a paper on it. Even we had reconstructed it in one setting and Mr. Ahmed Qureshi, our very kind of writers also, four of the uh, ligaments in which all the four ligaments were reconstructed in one setting. And so uh, well, uh, we were able to have the harvest of uh, God quadriceps and both of the hamstring at the same time. So of course, uh, uh, that at the end of the day, it's now 11 months down the line, the patient doing amazing uh, and uh, he's able to perform his daily activity, routine, he's able to uh, the, do squats and running and everything he is able to and he, and he has a good functional outcome. Of course, uh, we, I pretty much showed the uh, perineus longus, there will be uh, another tendon, which uh, unfortunately we don't have uh, another ligament in the uh, knee joint. So uh, hopefully that can be a substitute if we ever we want to have uh, this awareness longer for the multi-ligament. As far as uh, as a primary, uh, as Dr. Umar said, and uh, there's a lot of paper coming, uh, I think uh, still a lot of evidence need to come forward and with the good uh, work, uh, a lot of things can be uh, being uh, seen if it might be uh, called as a gold standard. Uh, uh, I feel more comfortable and uh, with the hamstring tendon. But in multi-ligament, we can even uh, think about it toward using this perineus longus. So, so just before we, we go into a, another topic, if, if everybody has finished question, I have another big statement to make. <laughs> I remember hearing it from Amir uh, a long time ago, uh, not long time ago, but a little while ago. And, and uh, the, the sixth option after the perineus longus also is taking graft from family, especially if you're an adolescent 
person or a child you can take your parents to give you donations so so the supply is endless the supply is endless isn't that right Amir? Yeah, I mean that that's for uh adolescents teenagers but well, that's what leo pinchinski uh, uh, was doing when i was there and it's because the feeling is that the collagen is poor and that's why you ruptured your acl at the younger age now what i hear now and fahad will uh, tell you when was it fahad no fasil uh, shah from coventry who was his last uh, fellow that i know that he's moved towards doing allograft for these younger teenagers. Now, all the studies seem to show that allografts do worse than autographs. So uh, that's an interesting development. But uh, certainly when I was in Australia, they were doing parent donations and in Basingstoke, they've uh, done parent donations. I've stuck to using allografts mainly because getting the license for parent donations has proved quite uh, difficult. Um, mm. But um, in a young kid, in a teenager, I would still be, and I'm sure Omar will be nervous as well, <laughs> uh, taking perineus longus in a in a. I think in a, in, a, in, a, in a pediatric population, uh, yeah. my choice still is that I would uh, will try my best to repair ACLs yeah. in a younger yeah. boy. I, I have shifted quite a lot in the past two years toward ACL repair. And I think even in, interestingly, I feel that over 30, actually, if you have a Sherman type one or two tear, then I think repair is even better, even in over 30s low demand. And I've spoken to Gregor de Phyllis, and he who published the most work in repair, actually now also believes in that. that. Interestingly, around us, repairs are going down. Mm. So all the people that were doing repairs and kept on saying, you guys are raping the, uh, the knee, they now, in, in 2019, only two repairs were done. Amir, there are that many, uh, there are many uh, factors behind that. First of all, the choice of repair, what type of repair they are doing. Number two, I think the type of tear they were repairing, that is also quite an important because I feel that people who are doing off the wall repair have got very bad success comparing to the one who have and, got. And one of the pediatric consultants is now leaving the hospital mm. after their experience and the results, particularly of repairs. And they're all using the Arthrex standard repair. So I think the repair is another topic altogether. We, we, uh, we will come into, the, we'll come on to that next time. I think. Yeah, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic it. work and I'm really excited to hear about all these RCTs in Pakistan and the literature. We are starting actually another interesting stuff and I was telling Ghazim as well the other day that we should do a multi-central trial. Uh, which we will discuss hopefully on a couple of interesting topics we have because Pakistan has got that potential to do more bigger research with colleagues and 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 and, and it'll it's much more easier to do research That's there fantastic work fantastic work with the so, so Sufyan if you have no question or is Sufyan has question or is he gone no yes no okay did, did you want to start your talk Kazim or are you too ill to we can do it another day if you want to I uh, apologize for that. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah, we can yes, hear you now, yeah. Okay. I just hear my talk. I, I, I'm very sorry if I, in between, uh, well, uh, yeah. but you have to bear with me. I have a severe cough and uh, things are not going good for me. So I try my level best to... Is that is that hat you're wearing medicated? <laughs> <laughs> so I think so. Uh... <laughs> Uh, the screen has lost uh, Monover for some reason. Oh, okay. No, no, he's trying to put his uh, screen up. Kazim is trying to put his screen up. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to share it. Is that uh, you can see the uh, my presentation? Yeah, yeah. You need to go into a uh, slide share. You know, make it bigger. Okay, so just a minute. You know, on your top of your, you have a slideshow. If you have slideshow, just yeah, make yeah. it. Sure. No, no, slideshow. We can see the slides. You just need to slideshow and start the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, okay, wait, okay sure. Just go to the slideshow and yeah, that's it. Okay. Just next to the review is slideshow. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me try it again. 
<laughs> you don't need to go to Zoom. We can see your slides. Okay. Yeah, just just click the PowerPoint presentation over. That's good. Okay. And now make it bigger. That's Fine. it. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Go on then. Uh, I just uh, start my presentation by dedicating this to uh, Mr. Munawar Shah. And uh, this is rightly uh, meant uh, for men like uh, you, sir. You are doing an amazing job, and that's we all uh, 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 try to our level best to do the same. Uh, we can't Can see it. Me? I can't see the. It's very okay. small. Sorry. Okay. That, that's fine. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, I'm going to dedicate it to Mr. Munawar Shah and all of uh, you guys, and uh, that's what our belief is, and our thought is, and our aim is. And uh, that's what uh, we all are trying our level best to uh, cope with that. That logo me il khalane se better koi sakhani. We have to keep on trying to uh, convey our skills. So we have to try to make people more and more skillful by our training, by our knowledge, by our skills. We can transfer to them. And uh, there's another saying of Hazrat Ali alayhi salam ke. Uh, those who will going to die without transferring a skill, uh, so will be uh, will never be going to be forgiven. So that's we all are trying our level best, as uh, we all are trying to wish and want to uh, transfer our skills to our juniors and younger people. So the topic. So uh, what I am going to discuss today is TBS fight evolution uh, injuries and. Uh, this type of injuries, most probably in other part of the world, it's acutely that they present to us. But in our part of the world, the things are somewhat different. Mostly they are being managed conservatively uh, without, uh, uh, without a surgical intervention. And once it is uh, basically the non-union. So that's where uh, we are coming to play and the case has been discussed. And I'm pretty much sure uh, Mr. Omar but have come across with a lot of cases. So now, a lot of the we can initially discuss about what is all about it, how the things should be done, and later on, okay, what are the options that we can have a discussion okay, for those patients who is having a <coughs> sorry guys, sorry. So those who are coming with the chronic like eight month, ten month down the line. So what should be the management? Oh, plan? Thank you, Oscar. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Someone speaking. Uh, any question? No, no, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. In, the, in the middle, someone was talking. Okay. So, as we all know, uh, this uh, tibia avulsion, also the intercondylar eminence fractures, yeah. and is more common in the young, oh, around 8 to 14 years of oh, age. Yeah. And these fractures account for 14 for 14 percent of all uh, intercrucial ligament uh, injuries, and uh, is basically uh, avulsion fracture and commonly involved the intercruciate ligament insertion site on the, uh, or at the, uh, at the tibia and it is basically in childhood equivalent to what we see in the adult uh, ACL uh, ligament rupture. It was first been described by the Ponset in 1875. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys. So in 1959 again Mayer and Mackey were who surgically addressed them so these are the main uh, guys who have uh, give, us, uh, give us the correct concept about how the ACL evolution injury need to be dealt or what are the classification on that classification, the management changes uh, with one type of fracture to another. So we all know how did this abnormal that this happened. So uh, uh, it's basically outward bending or twisting or excessive flexion, the, the TBL, there's a TBL evolution. Uh, at that point, and that's where uh, this ACL uh, avulsion injury come into play. And prevalence, mostly we have talked about it in children and adolescents, and uh, and in adults, it is concurrent. There might be another knee injuries. Uh, with that also, that might be an in, uh, internal knee derangement with the meniscus or with an osteochondral defect that also need to be addressed. A uh, gold standard of ACL avulsion. Now, the, now it is arthroscopic approach. Previously, it was be managed with the open arthrotomy just to fix it. Fixation, of course, it is an anatomical fixation uh, because bone to bone contact. You want to have the bone on it so that the healing can uh, take place. So, a different option goes with that. And uh, now the future goes with the 
use of bioabsorber screws uh, that uh, also is uh, coming into play or uh, at, at this moment we are using a generated screws also or with the another technique that we're going to talk about it so this is a, a main aspect that what we uh, come across we classify it and we always uh, do a CT scan uh, to be sure about it an MRI for the internal uh, derangement knee de uh, uh, any other associated injuries so we classify it according to that and our plan uh, then goes to how to fix and, and uh, with what to fix so uh resident play we all know about it it's always a swelling and painful hemarthrosis and now there is a different option that we are uh, starting with that and that might be the two screws uh well this is one of the options that come uh, that is uh, being uh, addressed and that's how it has been done with the two screws to compression uh, and that's two screws are uh, basically is being used in the young adult I mean epiphysis is open or you can put it uh, you have to put it uh, above the epiphysis uh, some uh, this the, this mention is with also with the uh, with the, with the Help of uh, wires also, uh, circulagic. That is also one of the option. It's been mentioned. So how currently it's being done is something like uh, in our setup. We are of uh, we of course uh, trying uh, to uh, uh, use this technique uh, with uh, which help us to uh, get it uh, uh, anatomically reduce it. And then with the help of an ABS button, we can put it on the bone and it, it, can, it, get, and it, get, it will now give a very good result. So these are the one of these things, uh, if you can see, appreciate it. Uh, so this is a tibial avulsion injury. And then there is a different option, a suture liver reduction technique. Uh, that's how it is being uh, addressed. And that's with the help of a suture, will you reduce your fracture and you tight on the tibia so this is uh, all all about it <coughs> <coughs> tibia jig uh, that's uh, what you have, how you put a hole before tibia jig you have to uh, take a good chunk of the acl ligament uh, and then with the help of a fiber tape or fiber wire you can reduce it and you can uh, then uh, use that so how you have the, the different option that you have uh, that uh, that is uh, uh, available uh, for the tying on the tibia, uh, not less uh, sutured swab block, you can use it, ABS button, there's another option that can be used uh, for it and for uh, the suturing of the ACL ligament, you can use fiber wire or tiger wire, whatever option you have got. So this all, all always very important the base should be clear the gutter you would need to be having a very clean gutter so that there's a good bone to bone contact on the proximal and the distal so the healing can take place and then you can uh, use a different instrumentation uh, you can use the wiper uh, to have a hold into the ACL ligament and then you can use a, a, a tibial jig uh, to make a hole with 4.5 mm uh, guide wire and then you have to reduce it with that and that's how, it, and that's how it's will go at the end of the day how it looks like there's a small video uh, to share so of course once uh, you are going inside the knee joint so this how it's going to look like there's a fracture you can very well appreciate it at the same time and that's very much important that is acl uh avulsion a meniscus anterior meniscus is also attached with it so you have to be very careful now shaving is taking place to clean the cutter uh, so that you're able to have a good bone to bone contact once that has been done so again the next step uh, will be uh, this is how you there's a different you can use a lasso and uh, to uh, pass uh, fiber tape or fiber wire, or you can use uh, this uh, amazing device also, wiper Arthrex, uh, that is uh, easily be done. And then you have to pass uh, mm -hmm. this guide wire with, uh, with a TBL jig and you provide five MR, MM uh, rimmer that can be passed so that uh, through, through this, 
now uh, you're going to uh, uh, pass uh, this uh, fiber wire and that's going to reduce it and this is going to use and here you can appreciate it it really reduce your fracture very beautifully and again that's uh, reduction is very important so uh, this is one of the way to doing it and uh, so this is how it looked like once there is a reduction is been done for the acl levels and injuries uh, so how it looked like uh, three were down the line so again rehabilitation one of the important so the rehabilitation knee is flex and extend to check for stability. Um, again, pilot operator radiograph of the knee is taken to ensure the tibia levels are remain anatomically reduced. And uh, functionally brace. What what I do, I keep a knee uh, uh, in, in the uh, straight for two weeks. Then slowly, I gradually started with the range of motion exercises and partial weight bearing. I, I allow for uh, or, around two weeks. Then we go for the full weight bearing. So slow and steady, we start with the post-operative rehabilitation. A few of the cases, which uh, uh, is, is like that. Again, this is a different technique. What type of uh, fracture evulsion is according to the classification? You can put it uh, simple screw it so it amazing to see a small uh, holes uh, to the knee and the whole of the surgery can be done through it. Or sometimes it is uh, just uh, as we have uh, seen in the uh, previous slides also, uh, this with the ABS button or the tibia and the fracture is 100% reduced, that can solve your problem. And sometimes the fracture is uh, too large, uh, too, too big. Simple uh, ABS button might, well, might uh, will not going to work because it is extending more posteriorly. So one screw plus uh, ABS button and, let, uh, uh, and make sure on flexion and extension, it is not hindering the screw. Uh, screw is not hindering the motion and that's how the uh, this uh, clinical uh, picture is look, going to look like and if it it might have having a screw might have any problem so you can go and we, we can't hear you cousin something's gone wrong with your computer later on but hopefully with the bio hello yeah can you hear us yeah yeah yeah, yeah i can yeah, hear we you. missed can you for the last hear? minute of it anyway okay good good presentation so i have i have uh, uh, been texted now uh, we will ask questions about your presentation if anybody has but osama has joined us one of my fellows and he has a keen interest in perinus longus tendon and he does them in his practice and sufyan was having problems with his computer and he's joined in and he's requested to ask questions. Uh, hello, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. So, so first, yeah, uh, comment on, on, on Kazim's presentation. Kazim, fantastic presentation. What are Very the, good. One of the problems that I've experienced with the ABS button is I put everything exactly as you say, but then when I tighten it, the ABS button I can see is not sitting, I can't, can't tighten it really hard against the bone. And then you go back and look on the scope and there's still a bit of laxity in the fragment. Seeing that I'm not a shoulder surgeon and you shoulder surgeons have amazing knots, is there any way, uh, any technique you can advise me that I can keep the ABS button really snug and uh, tight? Because I, I, I reverted back to using swivel locks because I can't get that ABS user to keep the suture tight. Being a shoulder surgeon is uh, nicking knot slides and you can tighten it as much as you want to. When you're next around, we'll show you the slide. The, the, through an ABS button, that's the thing. That, yeah, you don't slide anything, but but uh, I I don't do much of these. I only do them when I'm on call. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you're on call, we do them. So I've actually used swivel lock too. Yeah, so swivel that's why I've gone to swivel lock. So uh, when Kazem's finished coughing his lungs out, then how do you tighten the ABS? <laughs> or, or <laughs> Uh, you, do, yeah, Dr. Can I answer that? Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, Dr. Kazim takes a luxury of uh, working with a shoulder surgeon. So I think he, you can also invite one of a shoulder surgeon to come and tighten. Because I'm the one who will be tightening all the EBS buttons uh, along with him. Uh, 
but i think if dr kazim has got some other any nice opinions dr kazim please no well uh, honestly a lot of thing i i, I have learned from sofian being as a shoulder surgeon and uh, uh, not pushers that amazing uh, have make our life very easy and there's a different technique just to uh, make uh, tighten it on the bone so what my advice my uh, experience till now small experience you can say we have to have a good exposure honestly i'm very the one thing which i was lacking uh, we will not uh, we will not show okay, it is on the bone and of course uh, if you see on the bone uh, when we uh, when we say it's a bone still there's some soft tissue over it and the extension is the is a point we have to put the leg and the make uh, with the with the help of a not pusher Uh, yes. We can have a good tightening of uh, the suture on the ABS button. That's what uh, I have learned from it. And uh, all credit goes to Dr. Sufyan. Thank you very much. Sir, sir. <laughs> I think Kazim is not well. We we'll let him go. But uh, can we have an opinion if if Osama is still here? What do you think about his perineal longus graft? Because he's been he's another surgeon who's doing them in Pakistan. Uh, I have a credit of calling him my fellow actually also. Like, okay. Are you still here? No, you've gone. uh mr uh, mr munawar can i ask a question of course you can yeah of course you can yeah I, i'm extremely sorry um, first of all assalam alaikum to everyone i am extremely sorry because of my hardware failure i have to log in for, from a different device uh, uh, i was uh, listening uh, the talk of uh, of uh, of omar bhai regarding the use of uh, tendon graft uh, very recently i've been introduced to another graft and i think mr munawar shah would actually he uh, will second me on that that uh, we had uh, a journey uh, uh, through and uh, using another graph which was actually the uh, the uh, your 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 uh, the itb and uh, the way that i have seen that the itb comes much more thicker than what you have actually seen with the pl graph i have also worked with allograft and i have uh, worked with the the, uh, the tendo eclis allograft and the quality and the length of the itb that i saw it was just very amazing i mean if you're working on a, uh, on someone who is actually not uh, uh, who has got not very thin graft or you're working in a multi ligamentous sort of setting so why not to use an itb i mean that is one way of studying as you will be going deeper plunging deeper into your sub speciality you'll be coming across many many other things so my question is uh, that uh, um, uh, you have actually uh, umar bhai you have actually done some in this the studies regarding the tensile strength of collagen so my question is is there any specific arrangement of the collagen fiber which does make any sort of difference is just like because looking at the 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 the, the itb it has got a different collagen arrangement that what we see in our taking out hamstring grafts or you must have seen taking out of your peroneus longus graft so do you think does that make any sort of difference is does the arrangement of the collagen or the type of collagen that you're using is does it make a difference in putting more tensile strength to your acl in primary or even in a in a multi ligament setting you see uh, that is the reason uh, uh, research and evidence publication gives you that knowledge so the fatima did the tensile strength comparing double uh, peroneus versus quad ripple hamstring tendon and the tensile strength were almost comparable of double peroneus versus quad ripple hamstring with regards to collagen arrangement i don't think so there is any study in which i have come across looking at the collagen arrangement of hamstring btb or or peroneus longus but one thing which obviously is interesting will look into that if we have a possibility because we got a histopathologist with us who does research is to look at overall histological characteristic of these uh, both tendons to do the comparison and answer to your question uh, i don't know the answer to that that if the collagen arrangement makes a difference in tensile strength and outcomes of patient following reconstruction of acl or multi ligament So, so there is a study in 2008 by a Japanese guy called Suzuki, and he looked into the biochemical study of collagens and cross-linking in anterior cruciate ligaments, and he found out that uh, the, uh, per, um, the, the, um, the 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 tendons have different collagen direction st- strength and cross-links, and that's why uh, their strength depends on on the way the collagen is. So at the time, they said that ideally. The, the 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 quadricep tendon and the hamstrings do not match the cross link studies of the acl and they said that it was open for people to look into other graphs but that's all it is this was done in 
and 8. And apparently it is done by a chap called Suzuki and the study is called Biochemical Studies of Collagen and its Crosslinks in the Anterior Crucial Ligaments and Tissue Used as Grafts. Good Did study. With, share with me, Munawar. Sorry? Can you share that with me? It's a good I will, study. I will, we can I will, look yeah. into that. With, with all of us. With all of us. Mr. With all of us. Like that we can yeah. look into that. Can I just make one comment? It's, this is from experience. Be careful about uh, measuring tensile strength as a factor for success of a tendon. Because back in 1998, 99, I did a lab-based study because my boss at that time said to braid the ACLs because he was sitting at some hairdressers, saw the braid, and there was a few, there's a bit of interest around that time of instead of just, look, uh, just uh, going over as a loop, to braid the tendons together. The tensile strength was much better for a braided uh, configuration of four strands rather than just two loops. Yet mm. failure rate was more for braided because then when within the knee, with the biomechanics of the knee, it chewed up the tendon more. So it's not just about pure tensile strength. You need a minimum tensile strength, but there are other factors. So that uh, I learned from my own experience. I showed the tensile grade strength of braided sutures was higher, yet the failure rate increased in the braided. Uh, uh, Amir, uh, flat floor cloth. And, and also, uh, Amir, we all do good numbers of surgery for many years. We all know from the fact that no matter how much biomechanical study we read, how much shoulder papers we read, how much shoulder surgery we do, at the end of the day, we know the fact that if you do the surgery right, regardless of hamstring, BTB, or peroneus, it should be done rightly. The biggest reason of failure of ACL is malposition of tunnel, regardless of the thickness of grot or everything. So I think these are all very nice things. We all are going through the evolution phase. We all are learning. But at the end of the day, if you don't know your basics and you don't put the tunnel right, any graft can fail, even if it's arrow graft or even if it's a metal graft. And ITB was used as the original ACL reconstruction for the old Macintosh. Yes. But now I use ITB as a lateral tenodesis and more and more. And Alan Getgood has published good stuff on now how we should be offering lateral tenodesis with ITB to more and more uh, people, especially the younger people. So... Um, I'm not sure about ITB as a graph uh, because it's a very different type of structure, isn't it? But certainly uh, tensile strength in itself. Is it's not a bad option to explore and do study. Yes. And as Sufyan said, there is always obviously room open for doing new research study. Yes. So if something that is they feel can be used, why not running a study on it? Yeah, I mean, I, I as a shoulder surgeon, obviously below the belt and above the belt always continues, but I use a lot of uh, you know, tensor facial. So, so I do a lot of those for my graphs. I use them uh, if I need them uh, uh, for replacing a, a, a cuff or something like that. And, and Colonel Saab in, in Lahore demonstrated to us when we were up there the use of tensor facial latter for his, his lateral side transfers. You were there, Tariq, with us, wasn't you? And so was Sufyan. And, and so there are various uses. And, and, and as Sufyan said, I also use a lot of aqueous tendon allograft for my neglected biceps and pec major tears. Okay, so there are uses, but I'm not sure where the limitation of use it is in, is in with these because a totally different field altogether. So Osama has joined us. He's in TSA, he's busy, uh, uh, but apparently he has got experience with Perinus longest tendon in his setup also. Do you want to share it with us? Samuel, can you hear us? You, okay, you're muted. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I guess you can hear me. Yes, of course now. So you've, you've got some experience uh, with Perinus longus tendons, yeah? Yes. Uh, hi to everyone. I uh, hope everyone's doing great. Uh, well, I'm uh, uh, in my uh, city. I'm actually working in Elite Hospital, which is a pressure care center, and uh, we're having a lot of uh, ACL surgeries. And uh, for last uh, couple of months, uh, we switched. Uh, Prince Longus, and uh, right now we have uh, up to 12 months of follow up uh, with the Prince Longus tendon. So, uh, just to augment uh, uh, a lot of facts that Dr. Omar Bhatt mentioned uh, the graph diameter, the, to begin with, uh, is comparatively very easier to harvest, and uh, the graph diameter is very uh, significant and uh, very reasonable. And up to 8.5 mm, our bean graph diameter was when we compared with the hamstrings. And uh, on top of it, uh, 
Uh, I, I, I think that Prince Longus, uh, uh, one of the main question was uh, leaving donor side morbidity at the ankle uh, after uh, six months and uh, uh, 12 months of follow up. Uh, I have uh, a couple of uh, patients with very good results with that and uh, just like we expected that it would be a significant pain or, or any uh, loss of virgin strength or dorsiflexion strength, uh, but it was not the case. Um, but surprisingly, uh, out of those patients, uh, half of them almost are the athletes who perform regular sports and a lot of cricket players uh, uh, I have in those lists. So up to a total of 35 of patients we have so far are with Burns Longus uh, autographed uh, and doubled it and uh, reconstructed it primarily. Okay. So I would uh, also like to join that multi-central trial that Dr. Omar Bhatt uh, mentioned. So it would be a great idea actually. So we'll have a whole uh, combined idea of uh, across the country how we are doing with the Prince Longus autograph. So that was uh, my comment on the Prince Longus. So if anyone has a question about uh, our way of doing it, I would love to answer. So, so I've just found a study story. I was getting bored because everybody's talking about learning. There's a study from, uh, it, is, it is a level two study and it has come in the Journal of Medical Association of Thailand in 2016. And apparently it looks at mobility of perineus longus tendon. And it says that it does not recommend it as a primary use because there is at, at 12 months and 18 months uh, evidence to suggest that the eversion inversion uh, weakens. Okay, so, uh, but again, it is a journal that I'm not, not heard of, so I can't recommend or comment on it. But, but that is a study that is specifically done at mobility of perineus longus tendons. But saying that, I think uh, we are doing very well in Pakistan if we are doing a, a, a randomized controlled trial or, or a proper study, which should be a level one study and which should come up. As Umar said, he's going to look at two and three years time and then find out what, what is the long-term outcome of this. But there is, there is a paper, although in a dubious journal, but apparently they call it a level two study. Okay, so, so if you have, Kazim wants to ask a question. And we need to close too because... Oh, oh, so. Yeah. So I want to have a take from uh, you guys, uh, like mostly knee surgeons. Uh, of my, uh, still my question remains uh, about that patient who presented with AC levels and, and eight months or nine months down the line, like in the non-union of the AC levels. And so what is your uh, plan of management? Still like you think of uh, still uh, fix it or you might think of just go and reconstruct the ACL. So how the things we could approach for those patients with chronic ACL and for, That's my thing. For me, I just go and do an ACL reconstruction. Nine months down the line, for me, I just find that it's going to be more predictable. Uh, but there are other opinions. Uh, I just... If someone's mm. already been ill for nine months, recovery is going to be another <sighs> nine months months to a year after reconstruction i just go ahead and i have had a couple of these cases i've just gone ahead with reconstruction but but, but these has to be uh, adults isn't it you're not talking about the adolescents because the rise of the classification was children, yeah. children they were very young people yeah. so isn't that if right? An, uh, if, if it's in a if it's an adult like Azim mentioned over 25 and it's a chronic acl avulsion the overall uh, integrity of the ACL, the, st the movement of the ACL become quite difficult to bring it back into position, even if you put suture anchor. I do actually single uh, relax anchor, which is striker anchor. I use push locks to fix my uh, ACL avulsion and uh, I do them acutely. Uh, I agree with Amir with chronic. I, I get a bit stressed that post-operatively I've done few. And I noticed that post-operatively they were not as good. I will do one operation for them, and that will be an ACL reconstruction. The reason why why, why I was asking this question is basically uh, when there's a, in adults when there's an ACL avulsion, it's not only the ligaments and the bone that have been avulsed; it's also the meniscus anterior root that has been attached. Absolutely. That has been 
So yeah. that's the point. If we're going to go for remove, of course, we need to remove the bone piece. That uh, very, 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 very important, uh, Kasim. That's that's that I that I have come across. If there is a definitely completely plan of management will change. If there is a meniscus attachment, the whole anterior part of meniscus is attached to it. You have two choices. Number one, to repair the meniscus by transecting them nicely and anterior repair, or number two, you do fixation because you cannot sacrifice meniscus. I fully agree with you. There are cases in which you see a large chunk of bone attachment with the meniscus and you're worried that if you take that whole chunk, the meniscus will come out, especially from the anterior part. So I think in that situation, just do the burr, use the burr to do the bleeding surface like you nicely demonstrated and fix it. Give it a chance of fixation. If it fails, you still have an option of repair or reconstruction. I would just, like I said, for the couple that I've done, I've just repaired the meniscus back because the lateral meniscus is mobile anyway. Because it's normally the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus that goes there, comes in the way. It's not the medial meniscus as such. So the lateral meniscus, I just, I've just repaired back and just uh, taken, shaved that bone away. And then you've got all that horrible fibrous tissue at the base as well, uh, I'm sure you've seen. And then the ACL is quite stuck down. You've got adhesions to the PCL and it takes some effort to get the ACL off the PCL strands without damaging the PCL as well. So the meniscus you just repair uh, and they've been okay. I have, I have seen one or two in which there was medial meniscus attachment, Amir, and I was really, really worried about a young guy with a medial meniscus attachment. I've got a video I'll show you. I'll actually WhatsApp you. You can have a look. And it was quite a big chunk with whole meniscus attachment to it. So I fixed that. I, it, he's doing well. Uh, I, I, I would be very fair with you. I think ACL avulsion, no matter how top class you do them, for some reason they don't do that good. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I, it's it's with me. But I, no matter how good quality fixation you do, they always feel a bit loose. They don't feel that tight. No matter you do sur fixation, you do anchor fixation, ABS, whatever. They always have some laxity. Uh, post-operatively and uh, intraoperatively as well. They're never rock solidly compressed. That there is right. no so adults is a different story. Children is a different story, I think. But in, in, in adults, yes, you can see. I'm just, just changing the topic a bit, putting my shoulder uh, hat on. You know, uh, Jilly Walsh classified uh, glenoids. And when he classified the glenoids, he said that how can you have a, say, type 3 or a type C glenoid and have a normal cuff? I think the same is for children. Uh, uh, is different in an acute injury, but if you have a chronic injury and the, 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 the ACL is not working and you don't have the piezoelectric forces going through the ligament, which means that they don't have the, the wear and tear and repair on it. So then by, by a year or down the line, the, the ligament is no longer normal. And if you can depend on that ligament to work, I don't think so it's going to work. So maybe that's something to think about. But yeah, we've had a nice good morning discussion. Thank you very much for everybody. If anybody Thank has you. no more questions, can we call it today and come back some other time? Thank you very much, everyone. Good to see you all. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see all Thank of you. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you. So, I will I have a video of what we've done today. If everybody wants to, I can post it to them and see if they want to see that. And I'll post all the papers we mentioned onto the system for everybody to look at. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.